afternoon. My name is Daryl Green, and we're in the backyard of Dr. Frank Navratil, and it's a backyard of very special interest because of uh, what we have here. Uh, what, what is this exactly? It's a biodiesel processor made from a, uh, an electric uh, water heater. Okay, so we have electric water heater, and this is... Well, in my studying to become a chiropractor, I had a lot of uh, chemistry and biochemistry courses and learned about chemistry and biochemistry. I came to realize after I was a chiropractor that uh, biodiesel was something that I could use to power my cars. And it became easy for me to make it because of my background in chemistry and biochemistry. Okay, so the procedure for making biodiesel is I collect the vegetable oil from the restaurant, goes in this tank here, it settles. I take it from this tank, I put it in the processor, which is the apple seed processor, process it here, then goes into the wash tank where it is washed. After that, it goes to this lower tank, which is finished biodiesel. How do you come by? I mean, that's a lot of vegetable oil for the regular, for the ordinary home. Yeah, you don't buy that at Costco even. Um, I buy that, actually I get that for free. I pick it up from a sushi restaurant in Hermosa Beach. I pick I up about 75 to 80 gallons a month. Pick that up in the back of my truck, pump it in there, use that to settle it, put it in the processor, process it, it goes into the wash tank, then goes into the lower tank, which I use to pump it into my cars. Yes, they okay. used to have to pay someone about, or they paid about 40 to $50 a month to have it picked up. He was more than happy to give it to me for free. Many restaurants around have supplies of vegetable oil. Uh, Mexican restaurants are their tortilla chips. All uh, Japanese and Chinese restaurants do a lot of uh, frying of their foods in it. They, a lot of them use high quality soybean oil, which as they throw out is still very good quality uh, and it makes great biodiesel. So what are the advantages of using uh, vegetable oil and biodiesel? Um, the, some of the advantages are that it's uh, renewable. You're using something that would be thrown away. It's environmentally much cleaner um, and it gets better mileage. You can mix biodiesel with regular diesel. It's, if you have uh, a conversion system done on a tank or a car that's running vegetable oil, you won't be able to mix diesel with the vegetable oil. You can mix biodiesel and regular diesel in any proportion. And there's been times when I have been far enough away from home that I had to refill on diesel and I was not able to get biodiesel. It doesn't hurt the system at all. Okay. Maybe you can explain what, uh, what modifications are necessary. Uh, well, on uh, most diesel engines made after 93, there doesn't need to be any modifications made. Um, on engines prior to 1993, some fuel lines will have to be changed to Viton because Viton is a uh, a much more durable fuel line and the ones made prior to that were made of rubber and biodiesel is corrosive enough that it will start to eat um, the lines eventually. It would happen slowly so it's not a big deal if you put biodiesel in it, eventually they will become soft and you'll know and you'll be able to replace them. It's not a big emergency but it's so something it's to be aware of. So you have a little bit of uh, leftover material from your process here. What, uh, what becomes of that? Um, you, it's glycerol is the uh, end product and it can be used as either uh, refined further and used to make soap or if it's uh, made the process is using potassium hydroxide you can use it as fertilizer. Okay. It's actually a very good degreaser as well. Okay, a degreaser in the way that? You could use it on stains on the driveway, grease stains, anything like that. It's actually a very good degreaser. Oh. Uh, I'm Daryl Green and this is Dr. Frank Navratil and uh, thanks very much. You're welcome. It's, been it's a pleasure.